I went to Lola's Cupcakes and the sister who served me, her hair was showing. Now, to me, that was becoming alarming in the context where I was like, okay, if it's once, you understand people have their struggles. And I talk about this. People, different people have different struggles. And the fact that you're seeing it more and more, sometimes, you know, psychologically, you can say that if you notice something once and it bugs you, you will see that more and more. Not necessarily mm. because there is more of it. It's because now your mind is open to it. I disagree with that. I don't think I'm looking for it, but... I think it's become a pandemic. So as a Muslim man, do I have a right to be concerned and voice my opinion? Or do I just have to be quiet because it's a woman's issue? How can we have so many devices with so many apps which help us monitor our progress for our body, but none for the soul? Not only does it encourage you to read, it tells you how many verses you've read, how many pages you read, how long you've been on it, and best of all, the Hasana counter. Download the Quran app now and have a Ramadan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book like you've never had before. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Hope you guys are well, inshallah. Welcome back to my channel. As you guys may have known or seen, uh, I, I discussed the issue of hijab. Um, and when we talk about hijab, I'll talk about, you know, both men and women's hijab. And I think there's a big misconception where men tend to talk about hijab. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But the thing is, I would personally say maybe I'm the first. I'm not trying to get credit or boast about it, but I'm just being real. I think I'm the first maybe huge YouTuber in the Dawah scene who has brought light to men's hijab. You know, I've done this with, via, via uh, social experiment. I've done this where I've done direct videos about men's hijab. Uh, but yet again, there are still sisters who are still upset and be like, no, why do you have to talk about the hijab? And that's the reason why we have Sister Fahima here today. Salaam alaikum, Sister Fahima. Alaikum salam. How are you? Yeah, good. Alhamdulillah. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me today. Oh, it's a pleasure. May Allah bless you, inshallah. Can you tell us a bit about what you do and who you are? Yes. Um, again, uh, assalamu alaikum to you and everybody that's watching. Um, I am Fahima Muhammad. I am a qualified life coach and a certified NLP practitioner, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. That's basically understanding the human mind, behavior and habits and changing it also certified in existential positive psychology, mindfulness, relationship and couples coaching, as well as uh, certified to coach in companies and institutes. Also a certified mental health and wellness practitioner and continuing with neuroscience in confidence and change and on a ongoing journey of self-development and learning as we speak. So yes, Mashallah. continuous learning of human mind and behavior generally. <laughs> Mashallah, that's amazing. SubhanAllah, it seems like your religion tells you to cover your hair, not your brain. You know, it doesn't seem like you're, <laughs> uh, you're oppressed. So Mashallah, Sister Fahima, as you can see her credentials. And actually Sister Fahima, along with Sister Lauren and other uh, people as well, uh, both men and uh, brothers and sisters are working on a project with the whole marriage documentary and the app that we're working on she she's going to be a great part of that which will be helping us uh, where we develop help build the foundation for those who are seeking uh, to get married to help them in the marriage seeking process but that's coming out later this year inshallah we've been working hard uh, on it uh, anyway so let's get straight to the topic so um i'll tell you where this is coming from and i, and I did speak to you um, as well about this where i was out with my wife in westfield and um, we went out, I was doing some shopping, we had some few things to do. So I went to JD Sports, yeah? Now these things are obviously things that you don't look for, but you see. So I saw a sister there, um, she had a hijab on, but the front of her hair was showing and she had like, um, I wouldn't say sideburns, like maybe these things that her hair was, <laughs> hair was showing basically. And then we was walking in uh, Westfield and then I saw few other sisters like you know it's apparent because you know you're looking around you can see it sisters with their front of their hair showing you know and they're, they're wearing the hijab at the front of their hair showing i went to lola's cupcakes and the sister who served me her hair was showing now to me that was becoming alarming in the context where i was like okay if it's once you understand people have their struggles and i talk about this people different people have different struggles you get what i'm trying to say and i respect that but when i was seeing this systematically and i can remember maybe a week or 10 days ago we went to Acton and we went to order food and we saw two sisters who came in and the same thing and I was like yo like what is going on and I'm being honest I'm genuinely as a brother confused in the context now I don't know how you feel about this and I know you're going to be maybe grilling me or asking me questions which I admire and, and I think that's how it should be uh, to get rid of these misconceptions but as a Muslim man do I have a right 
to feel concerned that sisters who are like, for example, we do see, for example, hijab and really tight clothing. So as a Muslim man, do I have a right to be concerned and voice my opinion or do I just have to be quiet because it's a woman's issue? Um, very, very interesting points you've raised there, actually. And um, yes, I hear you clearly. Um, I don't think it's a question about whether it's a man's position or not, because I think as Muslim, if we have genuine concern about Islam, then yes, there is also the factor that we want to raise awareness. It's just that nowadays I do feel that a lot of people, um, maybe even some have accused you of being in this way, where when it comes to women, the only thing that people ever really speak about is the hijab, like as if, like you said, you know, my brain is not covered, but so, you know, it's, you know, and it's not an oppression thing. So I'm educating myself. And also I forgot to mention, I actually am on live TV every week on different channels from different sect. And I speak on various current issues and I do put myself out there. So I wanna represent in our community as well as outside. And wearing hijab myself, I have been obviously, uh, you know, putting myself out there because I wanna empower other women to do the same as well as feel that they can do and be whatever they want, regardless of being seen in a particular way. However, at the same time, in our own community, we can be scrutinized a lot for not wearing it in a particular way. And the rules are very, very clear. The guidelines are there. We all know that. But unfortunately, um, depending on a person's journey, which is no excuse, but it is a reason where some women may find it quite difficult to actually fulfill the complete requirements of hijab. And I also have to say that hijab is not just a head covering, by the way, it's so much more than that. Um, you know, when we even have women that are actually dressed in full covering in the actual way that Islam dictates and, and guides us, um, we also find that the behavior, the attitude is not there. So then where do we draw the line when it comes to that? We're not speaking about that either mm. because there has to be akhlaq, there has to be etiquette. There has to be so much more around hijab that we need to mention. And yes, this, this is always going to come up. And I think it's not just the men that's criticizing women or looking at it in that particular way. I think it's also other women that needs to show a bit of empathy, a bit of understanding so that we are drawing more women towards um, the right path and being open to it as well as giving understanding mm -hmm. and the fact that you're seeing it more and more sometimes you know psychologically you can say that if you notice something once and it bugs you you will see that more and more not necessarily mm -hmm. because there is more of it it's mm -hmm. because now your mind is open to it and it's like if you choose one car that you like you'll always run into seeing that car yeah, that that's, you want that's true actually you know like uh, there was a specific car that i wanted and i would see everywhere like oh my gosh it's everywhere when you give your there attention you to it but I'm going to beg to differ here because I genuinely believe at this very instance, it's it. I believe it's actually becoming like, I don't think it's that I was looking for it. I think it was that I saw it once. I was like, okay, everyone yeah, has no, their own struggles. Course. And then I saw it again. And then I saw it again. And then I saw it again. So when I saw it again, I, I maybe, I disagree that I don't think I'm looking for it. But I think it's become a pandemic in the context where, you know, we've got the whole virus here, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not trying to equate it to that but with my wordings, yeah? <laughs> but the thing is, um, Sister Fahima, is that I'm asking this question, like, what's going on? Because I genuinely, as you're a sister, yes. you understand, what's going on? Because because uh, do I have a right to voice this? Do I just be quiet because, you know, the feminists are going to attack me? D wh what does one do? Because, you know, we are told to enjoy good and forbid evil. And if we remain silent about this, then who's going to tell who what is? And I wish there was... YouTubers like sisters out there who did things the right way and sadly I believe the social influences played a massive role in this whole hair thing showing am I wrong no um you're you're right in many ways but you're also missing some points again I don't really think that you're looking for certain things but subconsciously our mind is wired in a particular way when something is obviously you know seen to us whether you mm. are looking for it or not so that's one way of looking at that other uh, other than that I think your job is a real struggle for women which people are not talking yeah. about it's not about not just wearing it in a particular way a lot of women may not be even addressing it because they themselves feel that they're not wearing it right so they don't have the reason 
to come forward to speak about their struggles sometimes mm. or if they are wearing in a particular way it's their own thing and that's how it is also it is a political statement now and i look at it as a powerful statement personally that's why that we are also being you know attacked for it that's why we are even being you know in certain countries where we are not allowed to wear it because i look at it as a powerful statement mm. but i think we're not giving the education to women to look at it in that way and i think if we are i don't think that you shouldn't talk about it i think the way we address it shouldn't be about just expressing what is wrong but trying to be more inviting as to if you were to do it in a particular way what are the benefits for you and how is it protection and power for you and and not enough people have the right look if people wear the hijab doesn't mean they're religious let's just also be honest about that OK, yeah. just because they're wearing it doesn't mean that they're religious. And what how do we even define religion even? And mm-hmm. just because you actually wearing it in a particular way, which you seem to deem as OK, it's proper covering, it's loose clothing. Does that really mean that they're actually even, you know, conforming and performing in everything whole and, you know, in a well, religious kind of context? OK, we're not asking for them to perform everything, but it's as good as me being in a fob and a beard and I've got a. A, a girl right next to me and I've got my arm around her. The thing well, we is, see that a lot as well. <laughs> yeah, well, well, no, that's the, well, that's the issue because the thing is, this issue of the hijab, it's not just for women, it's for men as well. And and I believe no one has the right to criticise me specifically because I've talked about men's hijab extensively all the time. So, and not only that, I did an experiment which has nearly got a million views, which I was subscribed, I mean, I was, should, you should subscribe as well. I was uh, shocked about it, yeah, <laughs> is that, I went to Muslim, so what happened is two and a half years ago, it was Ramadan, it was it was the heat wave, yeah, it was crazy. And I thought to myself, my gosh, man, I, I wonder what the sisters are going through. And it was an instant moment where I had, the moment I fought it and to even act upon it, I, I drove straight to Stratford. I, I wrote a message on my phone saying, um, my dear sister, may Allah bless you for wearing this hijab in this hot weather against all odds. Because there were some influencers who took off their hijabs. And I thought, right, like, you know, because people look up to them. And I would go to, I would approach sisters and be like, Salam alaikum, sister, can you read this? She'll read it and I'll walk off. And the point behind that was to enjoy good and forbid evil, uh, evil and try to encourage them in a positive way, you know, calling them to patience. Like Allah says in Surah Asr, you know, um, by time everyone's in loss except those who believe and do righteous deeds and call one another to truth and call one another to patience. So what I was saying is like, you know, sisters bear patience, etc. So I've done videos like that and there were some comments where some sisters said I was about to take my hijab off. It changed my perception. I genuinely try to feel for our sisters, but I feel as if sometimes I'm being told to like, no, you are not. Do you think it's that Muslim brothers as a whole have really done the damage where when genuine people, I hope I'm genuine, that when we come with, Mm -hmm. we're, we're putting the same category? Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Uh, Because like you said, your intention is there to really help. Um, But again, when you want to help somebody, um, unless you are also professionally uh, trained to go into somebody's life and understand them and hear them first, instead of just assuming that makes a big difference. And I've learned that a lot through my profession, because I can't just go out there and give advice to somebody. I have to make sure that they want my advice first. And if I'm going to seek them, I get to know them. I build that trust and build that rapport. And it's very difficult when you're doing da'wah as well, when you're just going to give someone a leaflet. And then all of a sudden you see people, when I understand human mind and behavior, a lot of people project. And even if you're coming from a good place, you might catch them at the wrong moment and they might project something that, you know what, maybe is triggering. The fact that they know that they're not doing something, you might just get triggered. They might get triggered by what you've said Mm. because they actually believe what you're doing but in a way they might attack you for it because like why do you have to say something like that so Mm. there's many ways and many perspectives of looking at it so I'm looking at it from a professional point of view and I think that I think we need to change the way in which we also try to help and approach people we need to put things out there which we like again we need to be inviting and not intrusive and not judgmental and not biased. And just because we see someone with a hijab, you know, which is half showing their hair, it could just even be cultural. It could just be where they don't know any better. It could be that they're only trying it out. You don't know, even if you've seen 10 people, so what? There's how many millions in this world, right? And at the same time, when it comes to men saying it, I think 
um, it's the language, it's the terminology, it's the timing. Like I said, do you get to know that person? Do you know? You know, when I coach clients professionally, there's a process. And I think we need to learn more about the process of approaching people just because you have a right. There's still no compulsion in Islam, as we know in Surah Baqarah. OK, and we know that we have to give them a journey. The reason why also I feel that even though it's a protection, even though it is something that is safe and for our security, women are still being attacked, even in their own homes. Women are still being abused, mm -hmm. even and as majority of them are women. So mm -hmm. we're not addressing these issues, which is more important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they are looking at hijab as, an, oh, yes, it should be a protection. But sometimes we're not being protected. We're only being criticized for not wearing it in a particular way mm -hmm. or not, you know, being in a particular way. So we okay. need to address more deeper, more social issues, which I try to raise. And by the way, I am someone who actually raised a whole topic on Sky TV in one of the uh, platforms talking about hijab for men as well but i just don't have the same following as you but yeah, the thing I is can, I, can, I, can put it, I can put it on my channel you know i, I don't mind so that you know i think it's you know because hijab is first and foremost for men to lower their gazes by the way yeah so that's yeah. how it is actually translated in the quran yeah. and again a lot of people don't understand it it's a lot to do with etiquette it's a lot to do mm -hmm. with manners it's a lot to do with treatment and behavior and we really you know we don't really recognize that mm -hmm. and again it's and for me i like to represent outside our community you know women are looked upon as they are oppressed and suppressed only because sometimes we are avoiding the real issues that are happening to our women mm. who are even trying to wear who are struggling hijab is kind of a jihad you know it is actually a struggle and you know we are all taking on that struggle differently and i think if we had more empathy towards our women yeah. who are wearing and trying to wear it mm. then maybe they might be more open to understanding where we're coming from if mm. we have the right language and terminology Okay, look, the thing is, I understand where you're coming from. Like, for example, that there's a bigger issues that's happening in the home or in the house or wherever it may be. And the, the fact is that Allah didn't tell the woman to cover up because men can't control themselves, by the way. There's a big misconception where people think that Allah told mm. uh, women, oh, you women, you cover up because men are animals. That's not the case because Allah tells us to lower the gaze. So they believe in man and they believe in women to lower the gaze. But Allah addresses the men to lower their gaze because we're visual creatures, you know, and, yeah. the, uh, and the woman covers up. So we're not saying that a woman who wears a hijab is not prone to get raped. That exactly. can happen. Do you get it? Um, there's many yes. reasons Allah. We, we wear the, I grow the beard or I have to cover from my navel to my knee and you need to wear the hijab and the abaya, whatever it may be, because Allah tells me to. Uh, not because, yes. and, and, and there's this whole misunderstanding of, Oh, I choose to. No, you don't choose to. I don't choose to. I'll be honest. I don't choose to say, no, no, I choose yes. to cover from my navel to my knee. No, I do it because Allah told me to do it. It's not a matter of choose to. And this issue, this um, um, statement of I choose to is wrong uh, because at the end of the day, we don't believe that there's a this, this famous philosopher. I forgot his name. Uh, I, I'm bad with names. But he said man is born free, but in shackles everywhere. So we believe that those women who even walk and maybe wearing miniskirts, etc. By the way, I, I, I highly believe that seeing a woman and even no matter how she's dressed, that you should have the utmost respect. And when I do my social experiments, when I speak to these kind of girls who are dressed in, a, in, in an appropriate manner, I always refer to them as sister. Even I always say, yeah, what's your name? Sister Alexa, Sister Sarah. I, 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 I do that on purpose so they feel that... I'm I'm not like you know sadly we live in a society hypersexualized oh is he stopping me because no um, it's a social experiment yes my, as yeah sister I want to I, I I do that on purpose you know and the thing is it's that we need to understand because what happens is otherwise is that like you said okay people are having their struggles there's one thing that people are having their struggles and there's another thing where for example if we saw a lot of brothers in beards and phobes smoking cigars argument sake. Now we're going to say, okay, people are going through struggles. There are people who are smoking, they're trying to quit. But when we see a lot of brothers in phobes and beards smoking cigars, we're going to start thinking, well, hold on a second now. Do we start be like, oh, he's going through a struggle and he's going to use that as an excuse to carry on, carry on his struggle smoking cigar? Or do we address the issue? So I'm asking the question, and there might be people listening. Sister Fahima, the question I'm asking is this. I'll be honest with you. I don't understand. I understand people have struggles. I understand I had my struggles. It took me a couple of years to leave certain sins. Yeah. So it, it takes time. I understand that. But the more we're quiet about this now, and I'm not saying it's a massive crime being committed, but what I'm saying is I'm trying to fathom and understand why a sister would cover her hair, get the hijab, which is a, yes, I understand sometimes it can be cultural. Yeah. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe most times it's not. To, to wear the hijab, to wake up and say, okay, I'm going to put the hijab on, but I'm going to show the front of my hair. Now, 
if it's being worn for the sake of Allah, like imagine if I'm told I have to cover from my navel to my knee, but I show, um, like, I, sh I show my thighs, let's say. Now, and I'm a Muslim, I'm clear Muslim. Yeah, I'm wearing a fob, but my fob is up to a certain point where you can see my thighs. Mm -hmm. It will leave, would it, would, would it not leave you a bit confused in the context? Like, I'm seeing a lot of brothers and they're showing their thighs, and they are Muslims, clear, they're Muslim, yeah, and they're, they're trying to practice. Wouldn't you be like, what's going on here? Well, I think, you know what, in answer to your question, really, it's very simple for me, and I understand where you're coming from, is the fact that I think a lot of us are not just, are not God-centric. We're not that um, believers where we are living for uh, solely for the actual um, practice and religious purposes. And I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. I really believe that because... Uh, personally, I come from different sect backgrounds, different uh, culture in my own family, mm. and not everybody wears the hijab, not everyone is from a first, you know, particular sect, and, you know, uh, we have our own debates, and at the same time, for me to take on what I took on myself, I had to go through a personal journey, I had to go through an actual learning, um, and I had to struggle myself to find those questions and the answers, which I'm still in that journey, by the way, mm. you know, those existential questions as to why am I here? What's the meaning of life? Yes, I learned about Islam, my family taught me about it, but I wanted to know why and I wanted to know more. And that takes a particular type of individual mm. that wants to do things namely and forsakely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think, unfortunately, we are in a society where that is less and less. Even if we have the knowledge, we don't have the willpower and the iman that is strong enough to overcome, you know, today's Western world and influences that's going to keep us on that path continuously. And we are also fallible and we will have our weaknesses and shortcomings mm. at times. But if you are on that path, you will continuously strive. And I I find that especially dealing with people with mental health a lot yeah. when they don't have the confidence they don't have the willpower they don't have the self-esteem on general issues faith is sometimes the one thing that is blamed or the fact that they don't understand it well enough to realize that that is their power to a certain extent to continue to strive even through the struggles because we are bombarded like you said with influences we are bombarded to look be and see in a particular way I'm quite strong-minded I always have been and I have been blessed but there's not very many people out there that can say I don't care what you think I'm just going to do what I need to do not because yes it is a choice it's a choice for me to follow my creator it's a choice for me to be in that struggle it's a choice for me to do what is meant to be in the hereafter not just in this dunya you don't hear these kinds of conversations you don't hear about people making choices because they have the fear of what's going to happen later on not fear as in oh because you know we're going to be punished mm. but more so as in you know we want to live a great life here and the here and the hereafter so yes there is a struggle with our religion there's a struggle with understanding it there's a struggle with many interpretations there's a struggle with lots of us also just only for you know concentrating on one or two rulings but actually the heart and the mind is very very empty half mm. empty compared to it being full and i think that's where the problem is i think that's very interesting you touched on something very fundamental and i think this is where i believe every single problem on this earth goes back to it's tawhid it's mm -hmm. Allah is you know it's and i think this is very interesting because I, I was listening to one scholar and he said the main problem is people don't know who Allah is and when we talk about yeah. we don't know who Allah is, because if you genuinely knew who Allah was, there is no way that you fathom who Allah is, but not one, but stop yourself from praying. It's impossible. It's like you go to an atheist, like if you went to an atheist and said, you love God. And he says, no, I don't. I don't even believe him. I'll be like, okay, do you love your eye? Of course I love my eye. How could you love the design, but not the designer? It's impossible. Mm. How could you love your nails? How could you love yourself and the way you're created? But not love the one who created you. You do, but you just don't know him. You don't know him. You ascribe the sh it's shit. You ascribe it to Mother Nature, evolution, random things just made you become like that. And I think what you said is very important, and it goes back to the crux of the matter because we can be talking about the leaves, uh, but let's go to the, the or the branches. Let's go to the root of the problem, which is not knowing Allah. If you genuinely, brothers and sisters, understood, and this goes for both male and females, if you genuinely understood who Allah is, if you took time to spend and learn who Allah is, 
you will genuinely, and this goes for the sister who might be showing the hair because it might be coming through influences, which we'll touch upon and maybe end on that. It's the thing is that you would say, you know what, my love towards Allah, you will understand and cover. And for the brothers who wear in these tight jeans, and you know, it makes me sick sometimes. I'll be honest with you, you know, with the brothers, I can be a bit more harsh. Uh, I'll be honest with you. When I see it personally, I'm not having, I don't want YouTube to, you know, um, I'm not getting <laughs> hate against any specific community. But what I'm saying is, when I see brothers wearing tight jeans, it makes me sick. I'm being honest, it makes me sick because it's it's it just makes me sick. I'm sorry, I'll repeat that again. It just I just I don't get it. And I'm and I'm like, wow. And the thing is, it's you know, you have a right to cover as well. And these very brothers, when they come and when they go, like I always mention this, when they go swimming abroad, they're topless, and I'm like, bro, you're the same guy talking about sister's pink hijab. And you're, to, and you're mm. talking about sister's pink hijab and you're going topless and all kind of madness. But the thing is, I think what's really important is we do not give the time to study our deen. And if we yeah. don't do that, like they say, every vessel sweats what's inside it. If you're too busy consuming, you know, materialism, what do you expect? It's what you eat. They say, you know, you are what you eat. You know, what you consume, then what do you expect something else to be produced? That's what's going to be uh, the, the effects of that. The, the, fruits, the fruits that you're going to bear is going to be what you've consumed. So if you're consuming all materialism and this dunya and nobody's saying, I understand this insecurity and, you know, with sisters etc but i think you've touched on a brilliant point and i think this is the crux of the matter where be it the sister showing her hair be it the one it answers my question i'll be honest with you even though i'm in the dawa you've actually answered my question because if you think about it deeply that's where it goes down to what well, that's where the root, is, yeah. the root of the problem is so if i next time see a sister who may be wearing a hijab and showing her hair i have to remind myself because what you just said there is something people think brother ali you're in the dawa you you should know that no, because Allah says, indeed, the reminder benefits a believer. And what you just said that clicked with me. And I was like, hold on a second, actually. That's true. You know, uh, maybe if I thought about this before, I would have not done this video. Maybe it's the reason <laughs> I, I, we've done this video that people can benefit what you've mentioned as well. And that's very important. So brothers and sisters, knowing Allah is very important because then you see that we do things the wrong way around. You know, we tell people that's haram, that's haram, that's yes. haram. If you educated people to the deen, they would know it's haram and they would leave that haram. We don't need to tell them. You know, that's why Aisha the exactly. said that the Prophet Sallallahu wife, he said, if if the Quran was to come down uh, with halal and haram, nobody would have come to Islam. You know, it came with gradual helping you, you know, Jannah, who Allah is, of course, hellfire as well. Ending on a note, I blame, I understand people have their struggles and I understand people are not forced to watch these influences, but I believe the hijabi youtuber influencers had a massive impact on this am i right or wrong to a certain extent you're right but again it goes back down to the individual are they the kind of people that are easily influenced as well like i said um i could easily be influenced if i'm of a certain mindset i i'm here to help people be individual so that they learn about their values their beliefs so that they can actually follow it and that's what i'm trying to do and even when you said um you know the main thing is not just knowing your creator but loving your creator and the yes. only way you can do that is to create the connection and the only way you can create a connection is for daily practice just like how we practice just watching the football when it's time now you know the euro cup and we want to do everything else with regards to influences and you know making sure that we keep up with the latest fashionistas and what's going on we don't actually practice our, our dean daily unless it's ramadan or any particular you know month of the the year and i personally and i'm not just saying this and i've said this before not to impress anyone the only way i can personally keep up with my practice and have that awareness constantly is i keep up with my salah constantly and i have to do it as much as i can and not just leaving out fajr it's like saying to somebody even you know you you know you pray five times and maybe you shouldn't pray if you leave out fajr but no you got to do as much as you can and i don't leave the quran i have to open up that book at least once a day and read a page and these are the things that we are you, not creating as I'm habits so sorry. i'm so sorry have you downloaded the quran the app I have got it, but I actually read it, uh, you know, visually. I actually like to look at that's, it and the book because I have got the time. Yeah, I prefer it's, it's, that. It's, it's, it's yeah. Really. It's absolutely perfect. And yeah. I'll do that when I can't actually visually yeah. hold it and read it, but I can actually do that. And like I said, there's many options nowadays. If you create certain habits in your life, you will, your path will open up for you. So like you said, you know, when you are wanting to do good, it's very easy for you to see it and be open to it. Even if someone reminds you like how we might remind each other, but at the same time, if it's a stranger, then you will also look at them differently and you will also, you know, approach them differently. And I think that we do need to, 
to learn about religion differently. I think, like you said, it's not just about learning the rights and the rules and the jurisprudence and the fact. It's more about understanding what is the meaning and the benefits. And actually, I always look at my religion as being protective and powerful. Do we even say that anymore? No, we don't. Mm. We look at it as yeah. a fear, as in you're going to yeah. be punished if you do this or you don't that. Now, and that's not mm. how I look at it. So, you know, interpretation in my way is you finding yourself, knowing yourself and knowing through that is firstly your creator and build that love and connection. You can't go wrong and you can't do wrong and nobody needs to actually, you know, even if they call you out, you look at it as someone there just to help you and to remind you and simple. So it works for both sides, to be honest. Okay. So I'm asking my question again, does these influences play a role? It does play a role. It most definitely plays a role because a lot of us are looking at things which we think is successful. Again, we're looking at things which, you know, uh, people, we look at these snapshots and think that we want that because they are showing certain things in life, which is attractive, um, a lifestyle, you know, uh, this kind of like, you know, fantasy kind of way of living that where they are successful. But I'm telling you now, because I coach some of these, you know, so-called influencers that even on their page, however successful they look, they are struggling behind closed doors. Right. and even their assets are not their own so don't be fooled and live your own life and know your own self very well and where you come from what's your meaning and purpose and what you see on social media i'm telling you now um it is definitely not real it is not yeah. real and don't fall for it exactly i, I think that we'll wrap up i think that was that was great uh brothers and sisters hope you enjoyed this with sister fahima um and yeah I, that, that was my take on it um you know and so you heard this what sister fahima said as well i think we I've learned something new today and I hope you guys have learned something new today. And I think it's important for us to remind one another as well. And I hope this video has done that. I'm trying to get, you know, like Sister Fahima or uh, Sister Naima Robertson um, and others involved as well, because it's important to have a sister's take on the matter. Because sometimes as a, as a, as a male, I, I, do, I don't know, you know, so that's why I'm trying to get more sisters involved. And yeah, if you guys want more videos on different topics, comment in the section below, inshallah, and we will cover those with Sister Fahima or Sister Naima or maybe other sisters as well, inshallah. Uh, till next time, uh, thank you, Sister Faima. May Allah bless you, inshallah, for your time. And yeah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.